of my close pastor friends have left the ministry to do other jobs. Right now in the New England Synod, there are 23 churches without pastors. The article was saying that part of it is because there is simply no winning in COVID times. No matter what choice you make, someone will be unhappy. You either have too many precautions or not enough, depending on what people think. Some people don't want to wear masks. Some want to. Some people think it's okay to sing. Some don't. Some think we should be coming up to the communion rail for communion. Some think we shouldn't have communion at all. Some people think we shouldn't be meeting in person. Some think we should be meeting without restrictions. No matter what decision is made, we can't please everyone. And at most days, it does feel like Nobody is really happy. This is different than other important decisions we have to make as a congregation. There's usually some way to find a compromise. There's usually some way for us to think it through together, talk it through together. So at the end of the day, most of us at least feel heard and we feel happy. In most cases, by the time we go through whatever process we have to make those decisions, we can celebrate together. COVID is different. It's political, it's polarizing, it's everywhere, and we just can't seem to untangle the mess. Someone asked me, Pastor, will we go back to normal wor worship after this is over? I gotta tell you, and I told this person, I just can't even think about it, quite frankly. What has been normal the last year and a half is only this, that we constantly have to think and rethink everything we do. The road ahead is not straight. But today, John the Baptist shows up and reminds us of what was spoken from the prophets of old, what God always tells God's people before something amazing is about to happen, what God always says to God's people when the road is crooked, when we can't see up ahead because there are just too many curves in the road, God tells us the road will be straight. The people of Jesus' time, they were living in a crooked road, too. They were living in a time when they felt God hadn't spoken in a long time. They lived with political corruption and injustice. They were living in a time when religion had grown stale and didn't seem to actually help with everyday life. They were living in a time when they couldn't see their way to God. Luke makes a point to tell us the exact time that John shows up. It is in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod was ruler of Galilee, etc., etc. Luke points out all of the politicians and the religious leaders of John's day. Luke, because in Jesus' time, their people were just as lost and confused as we are today. And John tells us that that is the time that God shows up and that they would see straight that the mountains would be brought low and the valleys high. John reminds them that the history of God's people is always uncertain. The fact that John appears in the desert is not by accident. It is a reminder of that time when God's people wandered in the desert and they struggled to see the straight path. And I don't know about you, but this week, I really needed to hear that. In this Advent time, in this time before Christmas, in this time when you can't make any plans because everything is just so twisted, when Christmas is even actually hard to fathom, John reminds us that even though we can't see it, God is making things straight. That what we can do is get ready for God to show up and be prepared. Because the straight road is what leads to peace. It is what gives us the assurance of God's presence in our lives and what leads us to a better tomorrow. Jesus came so that we might be able to see the straight road and that despite the uncertainty of our lives and the times we're living in, there is always something we can rely on. Jesus did make things straight, by the way. We'll hear again in Luke's Gospel that when Jesus preached, people were amazed because he spoke with authority, with clarity, unlike the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus would remind people that God is found in love and grace, that the tender parts of our lives is where we find God. Jesus would remind people to trust in God because God was there for them. Jesus would straighten the path. 
And I don't know if that can answer all those difficult questions that we have to have about COVID, but as we struggle with all the difficult decisions we have to make, I don't think we should lose sight of it either. We shouldn't lose sight of caring not just for ourselves, but for others and each other. We shouldn't lose sight that we are a community of people that cares about one another and the community that we serve, and we shouldn't never lose sight of God's love for us. I know that not everything we decide is gonna make everyone happy, and I know that we cannot win with COVID. I know that it still creates havoc in our lives. I know that things are stressful and the road is crooked. However, I am grateful and proud of the way that we as a community have handled this so far. We don't have people yelling at each other, and I know that that has happened in other congregations. We don't have people sending out angry emails. Again, I know that this has happened to other pastors. We don't have people threatening to walk away if they don't get their way. We're holding on to one another. We're living in that tension of trying to make difficult decisions and having some of those decisions be things that we disagree with. I think that is how we get made straight. It is what John is calling the people back to. Remember what is really important, what really matters. This Advent, may we remember the things that we really care about. May we remember to love others, to care for others, to have grace for people who make different decisions than we make. To have grace for ourselves who, dear friends, <laughs> we're doing the best we can, are we not? Remember to take some time this Advent to talk to God, to share our fears, our frustrations. Remember that our faith is what sustains us in such times. And remember this, God is always working to do a new thing. Remember that Jesus gives us peace that passes understanding. Remember that Jesus is coming, has come, will come again into the world and make our paths straight. When we do those things, we begin to untangle the path ahead and remember that our God is here among us. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is On Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cries, number 249. On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist cry announces by Having heard the good news, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching that the words in our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with the shelter and care and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nation, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. We especially pray for Doris, Darren, Gail, Carolyn, Joe, Marie, Steve, Larry, Beverly, Roland, Tara, Deb, John, Laura, Michael, Kathy, Liz, Ann, Alva, Gretchen, Adeline, Karen, Bill, Teresa, Kathy, Kim, Ken, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Vicki, Gail, Thomas, Ernie, Gethsemane Lutheran Church, Nicole, Carol, John, Mike, Helen, Barbara, and Liesel. We pray for the rules who grieve, the family and friends of Christina, Carol, Karen, Keegan, Todd, Dean, Betsy, Joe, Kathleen, Paul, Judy, Grace, and Eric. And our homebound, Betty Lee and Florence, and our men and women in the service, Isaac, Gus, Daniel, and Joshua. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send prophets to speak difficult truths even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered, confident that your work will be completed. We live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hear our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them in the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn which we say together now. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. 
Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's our teaching and tradition that we celebrate, not at the Lutheran table, but at the Lord's table. And the Lord invites everyone to share in this feast of God's mercy and God's grace. We sing our communion song. Take out your communion kits and open up the side with the wafer. The body of Christ is given for you. the other half and the blood of Christ is shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift and faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Amen. Remember that God makes our paths straight. Remember that on this broken road, God walks with you. As Henry David Thoreau once said, pursue some path, however narrow and crooked, in which you can walk with love and reverence. Or the Beatles, the long and winding road that leads to your door will never disappear. I've seen that road before. It always leads me here, leads me to your door. Or Marilyn Monroe, I believe that everything happens for a reason. People change so that you can learn to let go. Things go wrong so that you can appreciate them when they're right. You believe lies so eventually you can learn to trust no one but yourself. And sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. Or Marianne Williamson, we must keep in mind that where the road is crooked, God makes it straight. And where our hearts are wounded, God makes us whole. As we open our hearts in purity and simplicity, admitting to God that we are completely powerless in the area of our problem, God, illumination, God's illumination redeems us. I want to leave you this morning with lyrics from the song, Bless the Broken Road by the Rascal Flats. I think the year, about the years I spent just passing through. I'd like to have the time I lost and give it back to you. But you just smile and take my hand You've been there, you understand. It's all part of a grander plan that is coming true. Every long lost dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars, pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know is true, that God bless the broken road that leads me straight to you. And now the God of hope fill us all with joy, peace and believing so they may be bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Our sending song is, Hark, a thrilling voice is sounding. Um, a couple of announcements. One, uh, on the giving tree, there are new tags because now we're going to collect gifts for the kids who are in our school. Um, I beg you not to spend more than $30 because uh, Santa's going to come and give out the toys. And I don't want some kids to get some $100 toy and the other kids get $30 toys. So everybody, just if you're going to do it, just spend $30. That would be great. Uh, but the tags are there. Uh, wrap the gifts and keep and put the name 
uh, on the gift so we know which kid to give it to. So if you're going to do that, that's thank you for that. And thanks for being here today. I hope in our singing, praying, and preaching that you have some peace to take into your week. Um, like I said, you can give on the way out of worship. If you haven't filled out your um, commitment cards for this year, there are cards there to do that. You can leave that in the plate as well. Uh, and uh, I'm going to leave right now and go in my office. And I would like to greet you all, but I'm not going to. So it's nice to see you all this morning for sure. And now go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.
<laughs> well, how many verses is it? Two? Two for
Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. Welcome to all those who are watching online. And it's good to be in the Lord's house and be together as we give thanks to God for God's grace to us this day and every day. We begin with uh, our psalm this morning, which is actually from the Gospel of Luke, which is Zechariah's song in the Gospel of Luke. We will read it in unison. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to your father Abraham, to set us free from the lands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The start of Luke's gospel is filled with prophetic moments where people tell of what God is about to do. Today we're reminded in the prophecy of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Zechariah tells us that God doesn't merely observe human history from afar, but actually intervenes in that history. God comes down to earth to show us the way, God comes down to walk with us and remind us that we don't walk alone. That through Abraham and others, God came to guide our feet into the ways of peace. That God forgives sins and offers us salvation. This is what the people of Jesus' day had been waiting for. It's what we wait for in this Advent time. We wait to be guided in the way of peace. To know peace in a world that is full of violence. To know peace in our hearts even though our lives seems unsettled. It's hard to know this peace when the world around us seem to be crashing down. But the story of Jesus coming to this earth shows us that God is not a distant God, not a God who doesn't know our hardships and trial. God knows what we are going through and is there to help us through whatever we face in this life. And right now we're facing a lot. We're facing lots of uncertainty. And I can't promise you any certainty this morning except this. God is with us as we move ahead. And the peace that we seek is there with God. That's what we'll be talking about in our sermon this morning. I want to thank Phil for being here to sing and Janet for being here to play. We begin with our gathering song, Prepare the Royal Highway. Prepare the royal highway, the King of Kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. Then greet the King of Glory, foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord. For he fulfills God's word. God's people see him coming, your own eternal king. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you, no more shall doubt assail you. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised king, your king yet every nation. It's tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before him, 
their voices join your singing. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. He is no earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's our second week of Advent. Our theme for this week is peace. And we light our Advent wreath as we say these words. We praise you, O God, for this circle. First two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let us rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year in the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Idariah and Trachonitis, and Lysidius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. Amen. So this week I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, they had had a hard week. And they were telling me how difficult it is during this particular time to make decisions because of COVID and how they were even trying to take some time to be with their significant other and they were gonna go out and then the phone rang and someone at their work had COVID and then it rang again and it was their, someone at their kid's school had COVID. And they said to me, it just seems like every time I try to relax, there is another roadblock thrown in front of me. I really identified with that statement. It's been that kind of week in the Hopkins household. And it doesn't seem like the path is straight these days. I don't know about you, but I make plans. I think I know what my day or week is going to look like. And then something happens. My plans go to hell. My day or week drastically changes. And it's totally different. It's hard right now. It's hard because so much of life is still up in the air. And we're trying to make plans for Christmas. And I have to say, last year it actually seemed easier. Right? Because there wasn't even any question about whether we would gather with people. We knew we weren't going to be able to gather with people. We knew we weren't going to be with our families. There would be no indoor worship. We knew and we made plans not to be together. And now it's more complicated. That's how it feels to us when the road is not straight. This is how we feel when life is so uncertain. We get that knot in our stomach. We get that feeling in our souls that something is just off. We have no peace. This morning I don't want to come across as complaining, but more just sharing the reality that we face. The reality that we're facing in our personal lives, in our work lives, and we're facing in our lives together as church. Everything is harder. I was reading an article this week about how many so about how so many pastors are leaving the ministry. In one survey, pastors over, under the age of 40, 46% of them said they were thinking of leaving the ministry. And it's 36% for every age group. I've shared with some of you that I've had three very close pastoral friends leave the ministry in the last two months. Right now, in the New England City, there are 23 churches without a pastor. The article was saying that part of it, part of it, is that there's no winning in COVID times. That no matter what choice we make, someone will be unhappy. You either have too many precautions or not enough, depending on the person's particular point of view. Some people don't want to wear a mask, some want to. Some people think it's okay to sing, some don't. Some people think we should be coming to the communion rail for communion. Some people think we shouldn't have communion at all. Some people think we shouldn't be meeting in person. Some people think we should be meeting without restrictions at all. And no matter what decision we make, we can't please everyone. In most days, it feels like no one is happy. And this is different. It's different than other important decisions that we made together as a congregation. Because there's usually a way to find a compromise. There's usually some way for us to think it through together, to talk it out, to come to some conclusion that will at least make the majority of us happy and content. In most cases, in our congregation, by the time we go through the process and we've made a decision, we can celebrate together. COVID is different. It is political. It is polarizing. It is everywhere, and we can't seem to untangle the mess. Someone asked me, Pastor, will we go back to our normal worship after this is over? Dear friends, I... I can't even begin to think about it. What has been normal in the last year and a half is only this, that we have constantly had to think and rethink everything that we do. And the road ahead, it's not straight. That's kind of funny because it says good luck. Yeah, I don't know if you know that. But today, John the Baptist shows up and reminds us of what was spoken from the prophets of old. What God always tells God's people right before something amazing is about to happen. What God always says to God's people when the road is crooked. When we can't see up ahead because there's just too many curves in the road, God tells us, 
that the road will be straight. And the people of Jesus' time were living with a crooked road. They were living in a time when they felt God hadn't spoken in a long, in a long time. They lived in a political, with political corruption and injustice. They were living in a time when religion had grown stale and didn't actually seem to help anybody with their life. They were living in a time when they couldn't see their way to God. You know, Luke makes a point to tell us the time when John comes. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod, ruler of Galilee, etc., etc., Luke points out all the politicians and religious leaders of John's day. Because in Jesus' time, the people were just as lost and confused as we are today. And, God, and John tells them that this is exactly God's time. That they would see the road be straight. That the mountains would be laid low and the valleys lifted. John reminds them of the history of God's, that God, the history of God's people is always uncertain. That John appearing in the desert is not by accident. It is a reminder of the time that God's people wandered in the desert and they struggled to see the straight path. And I don't know about you, but it was a message I really needed to hear this week. In this Advent time, in this time before Christmas, in this time when we can't make any plans because everything is so twisted, when Christmas is even harder, harder to fathom, John reminds us that even though we can't see it, God is making things straight. That what we can do is simply be ready and prepared. Because the straight road is actually what leads to peace. It's what gives us the assurance of God's presence in our lives and what leads us to a better tomorrow. Jesus came so that we might be able to see the straight road again. That despite the uncertainty of our times and the times that we're living in, there is something that we can always rely on. And that's that Jesus did make things straight. We're here again in Luke's gospel that when Jesus preached, people were amazed because he spoke with authority and clarity that was sorely lacking by other religious leaders. Jesus would remind people that God is found in love and grace, that the tender parts of our lives is where we find God. Jesus would remind people to trust God because God was there for them, and Jesus would straighten out the path. I don't know if that can answer all the difficult questions we have about COVID. But as we struggle with all the difficult decisions we have to make, I don't think that we should lose sight of it either. We shouldn't lose sight of, care, of caring not just for ourselves, but for each other. We shouldn't lose sight that we are a community of people that cares for one another and the community we serve, and we should never lose sight of God's love for us. I know that not everything we decide is gonna make everyone happy. I know that we can't really win with COVID. I know that it, seen, it still creates havoc in our lives. I know that it's stressful and the road is crooked. However, I am grateful and proud of the way that we as a community have handled all this so far. We don't have people yelling at each other, and I will tell you that has happened in other congregations. We don't have people sending out angry emails. Again, I know that this has happened to some of my pastor friends. We don't have people to threaten to walk away if, they, if we don't do what they think we should do. We're holding on to one another. We're living in the tension of trying to make difficult decisions and having some of those decisions be something that we might disagree with. I think that's how the way gets made straight. It is what John is calling the people back to. Remember what's really important. Remember what really actually matters. This Advent, May we actually remember the things that we really care about. May we remember to love others, to care for others, to have grace for people who make different decisions than we make. To have grace for ourselves. And dear friends, we, we are doing our best. I swear on all that's holy, we are doing our best. Remember to take some time this Advent to talk to God, to share our fears, our frustrations. Remember that faith is what sustains us in such times. Remember that God is always at work doing a new thing. Remember that Jesus gives us peace that passes understanding. Remember that Jesus is come, coming, has come, and will come again into the world to make this path straight. And when we do those things, we begin to untangle the path ahead. 
and remember that God is really here among us. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is On the Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. Let us rise. Having heard the good news, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all the people and places that yearn for God's presence. We send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching that their words and our lives may witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care, and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy. Your mercy Send leaders to our nation, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the, imp the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is Send your servants to care for those who suffer, using our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. We especially pray for Doris, Darren, Gail, Carolyn, Joe, Mary, Steve, Larry, Beverly, Roland, Tara, Deb, John, Laura, Michael, Kathy, Liz, Anne, Alva, Gretchen, Adeline, Kat, Karen, Bill, Teresa, Kathy, Kim, Ken, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Vicki, Gail, Thomas, 
Ernie, Gethsemane Lutheran Church, Nicole, Carol, John, Mike, Helen, Barbara, Bill, and Liesel. We pray for those who grieve, the family and friends of Christina, Carol, Karen, Keegan, Todd, Dean, Betsy, Joe, Kathleen, Paul, Judy, Grace, and Eric, and our homebound, Betty Lee and Florence, and our men and women in the service, Isaac, Gus, Daniel, and Joshua. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. Remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O God. Here our own prayer may be offered aloud or in our hearts. God of new life, you come among us in places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and ever-living God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn which we say together now. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in in my, in my, a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is our teaching and tradition that we do not celebrate at the Lutheran table. We celebrate at the Lord's table. And the Lord invites everyone who is here to come forward and sh not to come forward, stay in your seats, and share in this feast of God's mercy and God's grace. You may be seated for our communion song. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God. Take out your communion kits and open the side with the wafer. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May you remember that God makes our paths straight. Remember that on this broken road, God walks with you. As Henry David Thoreau once said, pursue some path, however narrow and crooked, in which you can walk with love and reverence. Or the Beatles, the long and winding road that leads to your door will never disappear. I've seen that road before, it always leads me here, leads me to your door. Or Marilyn Monroe, I believe that everything happens for a reason. People change so that you can learn to let go. Things go wrong so that you appreciate them when, when they're right. You believe lies so you can eventually learn to trust yourself. And sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. Or Marianne Williamson, you must keep in mind that where the road is crooked, God makes it straight. And where our hearts are wounded, God makes us whole as we open our hearts in purity and simplicity, admitting to God that we are completely powerless in the area of our problem. God's illumination redeems us. I'll leave you this morning with lyrics from the song, Blessed, Bless the Broken Road by the Rascal Flats. I think about the years I've spent just passing through. 
I'd like to have that time I lost and give it back to you. But you just smile and take my hand. You've been there, you understand. It's all part of a grander plan that is coming true. Every long lost dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars. Pointing me on my way into your loving arms, this much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. And now the God of hope, fill us all with joy and peace in believing, so we may be bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Our sending song is, Hark! A thrilling voice is sounding. Hark! A thrilling voice is sounding. Christ is near, we hear it say. Cast away the works of darkness, all ye children of the day. Waken by a solemn warning from earth's bondage, let us rise. Christ our Son, all sloth dispelling, shines upon the morning skies. See the Lamb so long expected, come with pardon down from heaven. Let us haste with tears of sorrow, one and all to be forgiven. So when next he comes in glory and the world is wrapped in fear, he will shield us with his mercy and with words of love draw near. Honor, glory, might, and blessing to the Father and the Son with the everlasting spirit while unending ages run. <clears throat> uh, just a couple of announcements. One is uh, on the giving tree now, we have uh, presents for the kids in our school. And I'm really asking you to spend no more than $30 because Santa's gonna come and give those presents out to the kids and we don't want some kids to get bigger presents than others, so $30, wrap it, put the kid's name on, on it so we know who it goes to. That would be great if you could do that. We really appreciate it. Also, there will be no Bible study tomorrow. I'm just gonna cancel it for abundance of cautions, reasons. I wanna thank everybody for being here today, hoping our singing, praying, and preaching that you have some peace to take with you into your week. Uh, you, uh, you can give on your way out to, uh, out, there's a, um, sorry, the offering plates out there and your communion kits you can put out there as well. If you have not yet filled out your commitment card, please do, please, please, please do. You can also do that online. You can give online as well. Uh, I'm going to be leaving right now, go back to my office because I was in close contact, so I'm sad I'm not going to be able to greet you all, but hi, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's really good to see you. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.